All right, so let's <clears throat> let's do this streaming thing. So I only know if you exist if you are in chat. So if you are watching, you're going to have to chat. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and keep working here. So, well, by keep working, I'm going to turn off that music. All right, so I have the Fate SRD code base going here. And what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of finishing up this basic page design right here. Um, what I want to do is make sure that it works on a bunch of different screen sizes. Uh, this Fade SRD logo right here down at the bottom kind of looks wrong. Um, and I want to make sure that it is all going to work right. So if we go to small screens, that's not what we want at all. So let's go ahead and uh, continue working on some of this magic. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this logo down here at the bottom, uh, which I know that that is in the footer. So let's uh, do, 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 let's take a look at what we've got going on here. So the logo, uh, I recently changed the logo file because it was not working very well the way that I wanted it. So let's go ahead and make some modifications here and copy over what we used in the header uh, and that is good so let's take a look at uh, that in the code because we're not lining up on the left angle there I think that's because the logo with hmm, not sure why that's doing that uh, let's look at what's up at the top here and this one so that one's okay but this one is not all right well that's okay we can move it so let's go ahead and take a look at logo wrapper image um, let's go ahead and go and start with small screens and take a look at it so hmm. well, first of all this is not what I want Let's go ahead and keep making some adjustments. So in the footer here, the Fate logo is good, but the rest of it needs a little bit of, oh, I remember what I was doing. I needed to um, to update the wrapper stuff. All right, so sorry, it's been since last week that I worked on. So site header, include max width logo. All right, we do not have max width on Footer. And why do we not have max width on the footer? Let's take a look. So, so footer content. All right. Content. Oh, we've got max width. And then we've got the same thing going on there. So that is not good. And then that we're going to get rid of. And we're going to take a look. Since we're doing this small, let's do this. All right, what do we got here? Did I not save it? Next one. Hmm. Okay. So that takes care of the top. We need to add a bar, add a space there. Which we'll do that. All right. Then with the logo, wait, the logo's up here at the top. Uh, we will uh, pause relative, and then left, we'll make it minus um, a space. And that should. not do a damn thing that's because it's a var let's actually do this calc times negative one and that will move it to the side which is not which is just a little bit too much so let's go in and adjust this by hand then we don't want it to be that let's make it minus 15 pixels minus 11 pixels all right so we'll go here, make this minus 11 pixels. 
All right, that's good. I don't like that margin bottom, or that padding on the bottom, though. Underneath the logo. Um, I'll fix that later. But, okay, so we've got that. The logo itself should probably be wider. So let's make it 250. Uh, that is much better. That's going to cause us to readjust this which makes it minus 19. All right, Can I do that. And I think our footer is looking pretty good on mobile. Uh, all right, let's take a look at what it looks like on an iPad. And down here in the footer, footer's still looking good, excellent. Let's move this down to the bottom and undo this and see what the whole viewport says. That is looking much better. Uh, the shadow around this, though, is leaving a little... Hmm, I can fix that later. All right, so here we've got all the links on the bottom. I am happy with the footer, so I am going to go to my Git application uh, called Tower, and I'm gonna say, all right, I'm going to stage that, and I'm going to say footer, um, and I will push up those changes later. Um, hide, tower, hide. All right. What else do we got here? So we did that. Um, the header at the top. Uh, still working on that a little bit. We've got a lot of uh, space underneath this logo. This logo, why does it have a certain height? Let's see. Why don't we add a, the add a border around it? One pixel is solid red, uh, also known as front end console log. Uh, and so that makes it. So, what do we do to get the height the way we want it to be? So, height auto. Ooh. Nope. Height. 100%. No. Is this actually logo with shadow? That's what's going on. Oh, damn. Um, I know none of you have any context on anything that's going on, but hey, you know, it's the way it goes. Uh, all right. I need to place that header footer stories. remove that and then for the page basic page stories I also need to get rid of it and voila that took care of that uh, except now my favorite logo is looking weird that's great how are we doing on streaming hey no one's watching that's amazing all right Let's see. Um, let's go ahead and remove this position. Let's see what we got. Boom, that's that's nice. Let's see what it looks like. Small screen. All right, that's great. Let's go up here. All right, let's go to header. And let's go to logo. And So branding has let's do that. Oh, okay. um, we did that. There we go. That looks good. Let's take a look at it on iPad size. Looking good. Let's reset the viewport. And we've got a problem. We Okay, so that's all fixed. Fantastic. Um, let me just check something. Getting a message unrelated to what we're doing. All right, now let's check Twitter, see if anybody's said or done anything cool. Nope. 
Remember, there's a chat, and if anybody chats, that would be cool. Because I can answer some questions. It gives me somebody to talk to who isn't just myself. All right, so pretty happy with all of this. What do I want to do now? Now, um, to get this done, I have to uh, take care of the... Uh, I have to take care of the mobile menu. Uh, I have to do the drop down for rules, and then I have to take care of this uh, end page menu, which I do have designed. Uh, I think that I'm going to do the drop down for rules next. So let's go ahead and going to open up Figma, uh, my design tool of choice. Oh, got a comment! Thanks. Excellent. Uh, I'm trying to make this make sense as much as I can. This is the first time I've been streaming in a long time. Um, I know there's a lot of insider baseball, all that jazz, but, um, well, uh, if there are any questions, I am happy to clarify things for those who are watching. So, uh, let's take a look at the drop down. So this is what the drop down looks like. All right. So we've got it divided kind of into sections. So what we're going to do right now is we are going to um, stub this out in HTML. Uh, so let's go ahead and close all of our windows that we have so far. Uh, I'm gonna come over here, clean up my sidebar a little bit. All right, so this is, um, we're gonna be working in the header. So let's open up the HTML file for the header. Uh, so, um, oh, so no RP is asking what kind of libraries that we're using in the project. Um, so this project, I'm going to go ahead and open up the package JSON. Um, so what this project um, works from is uh, from Emulsify. Emulsify is a kind of like a tool that's wrapped around Storybook. Okay, and what this is, is this is for building design systems. What I'm working on right now is a design system for the Fate SRD. And what that is, is that allows me to have the HTML and styles that are separate, um, and I can connect them up to various um, backends as I need to. Because my plan is that I'm probably going to have a Drupal and a WordPress site that both power the, the SRD, various aspects of the the srd and so i want to have a consistent interface for that and i want it to be as seamless as possible so um so this uses uh, the emulsify design system um which again like i said is a, a variant of storybook which um if we look at this this is what storybook is we can divide it up into various region like various um how we want to divide it up. So like I have design tokens, like colors and icons. Um, I've got regions so that I can work on those a little bit separately. Um, and then I've got pages that I'm working on as well. Um, this is not how I work for the day job. For the day job, it's much more, um, uh, much more involved um, because there's a whole team of people working on things and we wanna make sure that everything is consistent. Um, this is my ad hoc. I'm gonna be probably the only person touching the code for this. So um, as far as libraries go, um, uh, I'm trying to see if there's any kind of library that's worth mentioning. Most of this stuff is just um, allowing me to build on the front end. Um, there's not really anything here that's, that does that. I'm not using like jQuery or anything like that. Um, I write uh, vanilla um, ES6 JavaScript for anything. So um, outside of using Emulsify, uh, that, that's really about it. So, uh, I hope that answered your question. If you want any clarifications, let me know. All right, so uh, so what we've got here is we've got the primary nav. Uh, nav. I, I have it stubbed out, um, and now under rules, I'm going to have to stub it out a little bit further. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, let's see, um, rules. We're going to start with a div. We're going to call this nav flyout. All right, and this is going to be the whole thing that packages this whole bad boy. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to split it up into various regions. We're going to call it nav uh, flyout region. Uh, let's see. Um, no RP, don't worry about it. Um, you're welcome to ask questions. Sometimes talking through things helps me uh, do things better. Uh, so we've got nav flyout region. Okay, it doesn't want to do that. So let's go ahead and 
make VS Code do... Okay, VS Code does not want to do what I want it to do today. That's okay, VS Code. I understand. Some days we don't want to work. Uh, all right, so let's... Now, whenever I write CSS, I write it uh, BEM style, so that's block element modifier. And so what that does is that allows me to um, uh, to have styles that are dependent on other styles. Um, I guess technically region should be done like that. Um, all right, so this region is gonna represent this kind of region right here, and then we're going to add, um, let's see. Um, Hmm. So what I'm thinking is, do I want to make this a definition list? Do I want to make this an unordered list? Um, and, um, I think I'm just going to, um, I think I'm just going to make this an unordered list, um, just kind of for simplicity. No, you know what? I'm going to do, I will be fancy and I will do a definition list. Um, so, because I don't do definition lists very often, uh, I'm going to cheat and definition list. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. All right, so let's steal an example of a definition list Boom. and pop it in here. Let's close that. Hey, how many people watching? Three concurrent viewers at once. Awesome. All right, so I've got my definition list here. And the reason that I'm using a definition list for that is that the definition, like the term, is going to be core rules. And then each of these are going to be kind of like the definitions of what that is. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, determine dt. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And I'm going to take this class flyout region. And since we've got those, since we have... Um, since that definition list wrapper exists, I'm just gonna go ahead and make use of that as our region wrapper. Um, we may need to back out and add a div again, but I don't think so. So we're gonna call this core rules. Um, uh, have I ever thought about an article database that you can filter the books or types of worlds of fate um, with a fuzzy search query? Yes, yes I have. Um, part of um, what I'm doing right now as part of the Fate Patreon and focusing on that is creating a better um, architecture underneath the hood. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is creating a decoupled uh, um, database for, it's gonna be Drupal 8 or, or 9 at this point, um, that's gonna contain the data for the SRD itself. Um, and then uh, what I'd like to do is throw in additional like terms and create it and make it more useful. Um, so that way I can kind of like grow it and be able to be very flexible and uh, do things very quickly. Um, the original code of the Fade SRD, what's live right now, was, was developed uh, in 2014, so six years ago. Um, and, you know, six years for a code base, like that's forever. Um, and so I'm hoping to, uh, by improving the structure, I can do more things and make things more things available. Like I plan on, um, what I'd like to do is go through the site and actually pull all of the stunts into a separate query so that people can look at all of the stunts in one place. Um, and uh, just, I'd, I'd like to work a little bit deeper into it. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really excited about that. All right, so let's go back here. Um, so our definition terms, uh, we know that they're going to be links. No, nope, don't do that. Uh, and so we're going to have fate, core. Then we're going to have fate, uh, accelerated. Uh, and then you don't see it on the design, but fate condensed. Um, and so that gives us a region. I'm going to go ahead and copy that region. And then the next one is going to just be tool kits. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and fate system toolkit. I would love to get some more toolkits on the site. Um, I think that they're very useful. Um, I also think that they sell really well for Evil Hat, and maybe that's why we haven't seen any uh, SRD content for that. Um, I do not blame them at all. 
Uh, they've been more than generous with adding content to the SRD. Um, so I have enjoyed that a lot. Uh, let's see. Uh, fate books. Yep, let's just call those fate books. And then do that. Uh, and I don't know if anyone's noticed, but I've added a little blue thing so you can actually see where my cursor is. I don't know if that's useful or not, or if anyone cares, but um, I present a lot, and so I have some tools for that sort of thing. So let's see. War of Ashes. All right. So now some of you might be wondering, like, okay, so I've got two columns here. How are we going to, like, do those two columns um, whenever it comes down to, to getting things the way we want them to be? Well, what we're going to do is we are going to actually uh, use CSS Grid for that. Um, one of the things that uh, I've determined is that um, the Fate SRD is going to use a lot of uh, current CSS stylings. That way um, I can make use of a lot of faster and better CSS. So uh, unfortunately that does mean that some browsers get left behind, but honestly at this point the only one that doesn't really make good use of Grid is uh, Internet Explorer, and if you're using a dead browser like Internet Explorer, I'm very sorry. Um, uh, maybe don't look at the Fate SRD at work. Um, you can look it up on your phone. So right now, just doing the boring HTML parts. Uh, volume one. I I am very happy that uh, that, uh, that Magpie uh, allowed me to put all of the codecs up here. That was so so cool of them. Um, so now we run into a problem. We don't have a term for odds and ends. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say odds and ends. Um, and then I am going to do that same one down here. What I'll do is I will add a class um, invisible. Go away, little timer. Um, all right. So now we've got our HTML kind of structured out and let's see let's do the actual real indenting so to do oh, come on all right you want to keep hiding I'll make it taller oh let's see um, yep that's that looks about uh, And one more, and then that's good. Yeah, I like my intentions to be perfect. Um, all right, so we've got the flyout, and what's going to happen now that I've saved it um, is we're going to go back to the um, storybook site, and we're going to see that it looks awful. Because look, pow, uh, nasty. Uh, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to need to style the nav flyout um, inside of headers as CSS. Uh, oh, commented out code goes away. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it here in the header.scss uh, file. If I was working on this, you know, as a professional project, I would probably split it out into its own component and um, style it that way. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to. Uh, I'm kind of lazy. So I'm going to say display none for this. And so now what's going to happen is it's going to go away and everything is much better. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to take this nav flyout and on this class nav primary link, I'm going to say uh, has nav flyout. Okay. So what's going to happen is that if um, there is has nav flyout, uh, then it is going to be uh, on a hover uh, display block. I think I've got my SAS structure right. Absolutely not. Okay. So, do, 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 do. what is that hover applied to? Interesting. Um, uh, 
Okay, has that fly out and let's just say display block. Make sure that's got red. Do I have errors? Nope. All right, let's see what's going on here. Um, spring on display block. That's weird. I thought that that would work. Um, let's see. Order. One pixel solid red. Console log for CSS developers. Has that fly out? All right. Well, hey, that's okay. We can do this. Uh, so, has that fly out? Uh, and this and hover um, display block. Let's see. All right. Let's go to this thing. feel crazy. Oh, because it's not inside the link. Um, structure problem. That, but it should be inside the link. Ahrf. Hold that. Uh, got links inside links. That's going to be a problem, isn't it? Okay. All right. Poorly structured HTML for the loss. Um, that is perfectly fine. Uh, what I can do is I can move this has nav fly out up a level to you. Let's do this into it. Um, let's take a look at what's going on here. All right, so. Has now fly out hover. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. So, poorly structured. There we go. All right. So now, boom. You see it? Now you see it? Now you see it? All right. No one likes that. Uh, that that does not look good. All right. But we're getting there. So we have our basic, like, uh, it kind of works. So what do we got going on? Who? Check the chat. Oh, nobody said anything. That's cool. All right. So what we're going to want to do next is position this bad boy. So um, nav flyout. Um, since the uh, nav flyout or has nav flyout um, contains the flyout, what we're going to do is we're going to put on has nav flyout. Um, let's see. Let's restructure this a little bit. So that I like writing SAS because you can nest it really well. So we're going to give it position relative. Um, the reason that we're going to do that is we're going to be putting uh, positioning on the um, the uh, nav flyout itself uh, whenever we have stuff. So all right. So now if we do nav flyout and we do it position absolute, uh, we're going to just give it top zero, left zero. Uh, just to kind of see what happens. Oh, look at that. Hey, it doesn't screw up our thing anymore, which is nice. Um, but now we got to style it. So let's start looking up some styles. So we have here our design. So uh, let's take a look at what we've got here. Um, drop down rules. Is this the one that's got the... No. Uh, here we are. This is the shape. Um, so we're going to pull the code from this. Uh, we're just going to grab all of it for funsies. And we're going to come here, go down, and post, paste it in place. Now, we don't need the position absolute because we had it already. Um, we're going to let the content dictate the height. Um, we're going to not worry about the positioning for it for right now. Uh, the background is white. Now, um, I'm using color variables for this, so I'm going to do color white. Um, uh, let's see, get rid of that. Um, we've got this background shadow right here. I can tell you that this 
this particular background shadow right here. Um, uh, the way that I've got linting set up, it's going to bark. Down at the bottom, it's going to say, hey, no, you can't say zero pixels. You have to say zero. Um, that's just a code quality sort of thing. So let's go ahead and uh, do a find and replace five of them. That's good. That means we're not accidentally removing anything else. Uh, let's do this. We've got to clean up a little bit. Clean this up so that we can get this unexpected empty line before declaration. 126.3. 126.3. Let's see anything. Unexpected declaration. I think it should be all right. Let's go take a look at what we've got going on here. Okay, so we're getting there. We're getting there. So, yeah, visual code is cool. Um, all right. So, that is really rad. Let's take a look at it over the basic page. Oh, there is no background color on that bad boy. Why is there no background color? Let's, uh, let's take a look. So, we're going to go grab... Oh, what was it? It was flyout. Nav flyout. Uh, background var. Oh, looks like I... Yep. I did. I was a bad boy. Um, and so, boom. All right, we've got that. Cool, cool, cool. It's coming alive. All right, so just because I want to uh, test this a little bit faster, I'm removing that display none so that we can see it live on the page. So, boom, there we go. Let's come back here. We want the rounded corners on this. So let's open that up, grab... Uh, this is a union of, of a couple of things, so but I want that border radius. So border radius. Oh, but first, did I spec a border radius? Yes, I did, and this is not the same. So I will use, for consistency's sake, the same. So, um, so we're going to make sure that this fly out. Uh, let's see, background, border radius. I hope everyone is enjoying watching me code under pressure. You get to see all the mistakes live. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. All right, those rounded corners are looking good. Now, it looks like we're a bit tall here. Um, so why don't we experiment? Let's now fly out. Uh, what if we said bottom zero? Yep, that's definitely not at all what we want top. So what we want to do is we want to have this appear at the bottom of, uh, of the do jagging. Now, the interesting thing is, is that we have to have considerations for what this drop down looks like on this as well. Uh, and so uh, I'm not sure, maybe the size is the same. Let's take a look. Um, so the nav is a height of 92. And if we reset the viewport, uh, the nav is a height of 68, so that changes. Um, because we're using various breakpoints for things, we can uh, use those particular numbers. So let's go ahead and um, set it up for the iPad first. Um, I like to work smaller to bigger. And to remind myself, that was 92 pixels tall. So what we can do is we can have a top... Uh, of 92 pixels. Whenever I do that, it comes down. Yay! Um, I'd like to, because I don't want it to be quite against the side there, uh, I'm going to move it to the left. Um, I'm going to actually use my spacing variable for that and say, hey, nope. I'm going to use my half spacing variable for that. All right, so... Uh, so that's good on the iPad size. Let's reset the viewport for big sizes. Uh, what we can do here is uh, start using some uh, breakpoints. So include large. Now, this is not what a breakpoint actually looks like. Uh, this is a shortcut that... Um, so. So whenever you're writing a media query, you've got media and then maybe you screen and min with 500 pixels. 
okay? And then you put all of those special stylings in there. I'm using a library called Breakpoint that allows me to say include Breakpoint, and then I can insert either a SAS variable for a number or a number itself, or any any way that you can configure them. Um, that way I don't have to write media, all of this, I can shortcut it. Well, you can shortcut it even further if you have certain breakpoints like medium and large, um, and create these mix-ins just to say include large, and then it kind of simplifies things. So it's kind of like, I don't know, nested mix-ins to make your life easier. Um, I like making my life easier. So. Um, let's see, I'm going to go for probably another 25 minutes doing this live, and then after that, um, I'm just going to continue to uh, to work on it, but just privately. Uh, let's see what's going on here. So, include large, I wanted to left zero, uh, just to kind of take another look. All right, great. And then the nav height on this was 60, what, 68. Uh, so what I can do is top... 68 pixels all right and now we've got something that's looking pretty good all right we don't have the little triangle we'll deal with that in a little bit right now I want to style what this these uh, these good folks do uh, look like so um, let's go back to here all right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I want to, since most of the content is gonna be this larger size, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to want to style it so that it is that size. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the font weight and font size for that. Um, and then, oh, I guess with the nav flyout, it is, let's do some split screen stuff. All right, um, so we've got the DD and the DT. All right, so I'm going to go ahead within nav flyout underneath here. I'm going to say DD, and I'm going to say that it is these two variables. Uh, and let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. It looks the right size, but it does not look the right weight. Um, it's also the wrong color, but that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, so let's inspect computed. What's this font size? 24 pixels. All right. That is that's the size it's supposed to be. So 18 divided by 24. Oh, I'm sorry. 24 divided by 18. All right. I am not using pixel sizes. I am using rems, so that as I adjust the rems, they can um, be modified as it goes on. So our size is 21 pixels. That is not good. Um, 16 divided by 24. Nope. Wrong math. 1.5. Oh, I guess my rims are 16 pixel rims. Yep, 16 pixel rims. For some reason, I thought I had set them to 18. Weird. All right. So that's cool. Now, these uh, definition terms all should sit on their own line. So I'm going to go ahead and say that that is a uh, display block. All right. Oh, not looking the right thing. So I'm resetting that. Display block. All right. That is not cool. What's going on? That's because I did not do it correctly. Oh, okay. Ha, huh, each of these terms should be a DD. I told you I didn't use definition lists very often. Um, there we go. Let's do that and that. Grab these bad boys and take a look and boom, they are in the correct order. Well, or at least going up and down. All right, so let's go ahead and style um, the links in here. Now I could nest the link inside of the DD, but I actually just want to style all of the links that are in here. And so I'm going to tell it to be a color of uh, color. I want to say it's blue dark. Let's take a look. That looks like the right. Excuse me. That looks like the right color. Great. The weight is definitely not correct. Um, that probably has more to do with um, the font that I've loaded. 
that is 600. Yeah, I don't have. Do, 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 do. I'm loading a Google font inside of the head. Nope, that's not true at all. Where did I put it? Google font, Google font. Huh. Here we are. All right. And we can add 600 to our wait list. And then, boom, we've got the correct weight. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's see. These underlines I want to get rid of. They're ugly. Uh, so I'm going to say text decoration none. Now, when you uh, hover over this, I can spell hover correctly. Uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to change the color to var color darker just because I'd like to have some kind of change and I like to add in a transition uh, to just make it a little bit smoother so if I go ahead and do that I get a little bit of a nice kind of it's kind of difficult to see I might change that later so let's go and oh, should check and see if there's any comments nope just no RP saying he loved they. I'm making an assumption about pronouns. I'm a jerk. I'm sorry. Uh, saying that they love visual code. I love visual code too. Um, so let's go ahead and fix all of this outstanding garbage here where I did poor structured or poorly structured code. So one of the things that I've learned as a developer is uh, as that part of my job as a designer and developer is that sometimes it, whenever you build things uh, you build it once to get it to work and you build it again to get it to work well uh, and sometimes that's the way it goes and that is okay um, people who do this sort of work for a living uh, knows that there are uh, just a lot of different ways uh, in which we can do this uh, and so like, what you need to do is you need to kind of get something working and build on top of that. It's it's really good. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, just editing HTML. No. Um, yeah, hey, this one's already done. Good. All right. So all of that is fixed. So now, boom, all of these are fixed too, which is great. Um, so what do we have next? Um, we want to have a little in between them, but we're not going to do that yet. We're going to do the uh, the term header, which you can see here is just kind of like a little bit uh, not perfect. So I'm going to grab you, and I'm going to grab the let's see font weight and size, and let's go ahead and do that with the DT which is the kind of definition term. Um, as I said before, we're doing rems for size, uh, for font size. So this should turn into the appropriate size that we want. Let's go ahead and take a look. That is 14 pixels, which is good. Um, hold on, I'm getting a message. Okay, so 14 pixels, that's good. Um, let's see. I want the color for it. Color. Uh, it's going to be the color dark, which I know is not a color, but it's a purpose. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. We want to text transform uppercase. There we go. All right. Uh, let's see. All right, fantastic. Now that we've got this going, um, looks good. Um, we see that these are indented. So what's going on there? Um, looks like they come with some natural indention. So let's go ahead and fix that. Um, we're going to set the margin for these babies to zero. Uh, there we go. 
All right, so it's coming along pretty well. Um, so my wife is telling me to have fun streaming, and I am. Um, let's see, what's going on over here? Two concurrent viewers. Nice. Average watch time, seven minutes. Cool. Um, all right, so uh, we need a padding on this block right here that we have. So let's go ahead and ch -ch -ch come up here, and we're going to add a padding. So the padding, we're going to start with uh, just a sorry two space to see how that works out. All right, so that looks pretty good. What do we got over here? That's about what we have in here. Um, what I do want to do is that this top has got way more space than it should. Why is that? Let's take a look. The DL. All right, nav flyout region. So let's go ahead and fix that, shall we? Uh, nav flyout and uh, region. Um, we're going to also give it a margin of zero. We should see all of that kind of pop into different changes. Great. All right, cool, cool, cool. So now we've got something that's starting to look like what we want it to look like. Uh, all right. Where do we go from here? We've got this. We want to do this grid system. Want, let's take a look at it on iPad. We'll have plenty of room to do it on iPad. So we can do one sort of thing, which is good. All right. So then let's reset the viewport. Let's. So let's talk about this. So it looks like we're going to have. Um, couple of different columns here of different sizes and so because the content are hmm. so um, I wonder what happens if we set to column just to have some fun if we said fly out would have columns so here let's do columns column count two Maybe we're not using grid. Maybe we're using column count. That is, uh, it's going to be a lot easier. All right. So, uh, nav fly out. Ooh, let's go to the right place. Nav fly out. All right. So, display none, padding. Column count two. Uh, let's see, we're going to want a column gap of, I'm going to just call it space for right now. Let's see what we end up with. Might need two spaces. So let's do that. All right, two spaces, good. All right. Um, so now what we should do is DT, we're going to, or the region margin we're going to add a space to the bottom so that we get a little bit of some space there great let's add our dividing rules underneath that so our rules if we can go in here and select one um, the color is e5 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 um, let me look at my colors and see if i have that i do not so why don't i Color gray, light. Uh, what do we do? Color gray, medium. And e5, e5, e5. Good. All right, let's select that. All right, we've got a new color. Um, then let's go to the header region. We're going to do order. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Border, of course it's not doing it now. Border bottom, one pixel, solid, and then we're going to do our color gray medium. So let's go take a look. All right, that is good. Um, what we're going to want to do is add some padding to the bottom. So padding bottom, I think one space is going to be too much padding on the bottom. No, that's looking pretty good I think it means that we need to add uh, make the margin bottom a little bit different so let's 
I just make that two, that's too much. So I definitely need space one and a half, which I do not have. So let's go ahead and do some calc. Love me some calc. All right, that's all good. Um, so now it's starting to look like what we wanted it to look like over here. Um, all of these, those are looking good, but I don't think the rollover state is very good on that. Mm, it's not very good at all. Um, but we'll fix that shortly. Um, interesting. So the ones at the col at the bottom shouldn't have borders. So you know, uh, what are we going to do with that? We can use nth child to do that. Um, I will admit nth child is something I uh, look up on CSS tricks because it has a nice uh, nth child um, thing to help with. Uh, little doojaggy. That might be it. CSS tricks tester. Here we are. All right, so this, this helps us define what we're doing on nth child. So if I want to just do n, it's everything. Uh, n plus 2 uh, is not n plus 0. No. 2n. I'm just going to skip doing something fancy, and I'm going to, oh, wait a minute. Uh, so I was thinking of it in a positive way. I need to think of it as uh, 2n plus 2 plus 1. Select every third item. Okay. So that's 3n. There we go. All right, nth child 3n is going to do the trick. So let's see. If we go and add nth child oh, hold on, and nth child 3n or the bottom none. We should get what we're looking for. Maybe? Yeah, there it is. What, what? All right, and we've got a little bit too much space on the bottom, so we're going to tell it that the flyout, the padding, we're okay with it being that on the top and the sides, but on the bottom, we're going to say, nope, you don't get any. And boom, there we go. All right, that's pretty cool. That is looking good. Um, I need to look up. Uh, column CSS because uh, I know that there's a way for us to do that uh, vertical divider columns property let's see what we got anybody in the chat nope all right cool all right um, let's see column count multiple columns uh, rule style hmm. rule width rule color Column rule, that's probably what we're going to look for. So, all right, column rule. Hmm, it's just like border. Nice. Uh, let's go ahead in here. Let's apply this. I know that's not the right color, but hey, look at that. That's looking pretty good, except for the how it's aligning in the bottom there. So we can fix that, though. All right, so let's look at our border color. Let's grab that gray medium and we'll fix this. Get rid of that. Um, now we're going to uh, restore the padding here. And what we're going to do is um, we are going to remove the margin bottom 
on Nth Childs instead so that we can have our little cap. And hey, that's looking really good. So nice, nice, nice. All right. So um, what do we got going on here? So this is looking good. Let's make sure that's all right. That's 100%. This is 100%. We have a pretty decent match on everything. A um, few little tweaks here or there, but okay. So, um, yeah, like the colors of these. That is 434343. Let's take a look at colors. Gray dark. Oh, I'm using dark. Oh, which is the right color. Okay. Well, it looks a little bit different in here, but that's okay. So, excellent. So now, uh, what do we got? Um, we're going to have to do a little triangle on this bad boy. Hmm. Let's see. All right. Just checking on the live stream. Three concurrent viewers. Hello, everybody. All right. I hope everybody's having fun watching me live code. Um, all right. So we need to add a uh, box that looks like this little thing right here. Let's move this back over and rectangle. The border radius on it is two pixels. All right, great. So let's grab, uh, you know what? Let's grab all of this from our design file uh, and let's go in here. So region, what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to do an after. Uh, the content for the after is going to be empty because we're not actually putting anything in there and we're just going to put that in there um, and it is oh it's barking at me because it does not like what I've done uh, all right so now we've got it and it's nowhere to be seen great um, what we're going to do is we're going to, because we're doing something inside of the region as a pseudo element, um, we're going to add position relative to the region. And then what we're going to do is that should, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to do. Let's find it. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. Has nav, nav fly out. Let's close a lot of these and... Am I in the right thing? I'm in a region. Oh, no, that's not the right thing at all. All right, so let's go ahead and cut that. Let's get rid of this position relative. I want it inside of the nav flyout itself. So let's go ahead and put that after our media query. And we'll do this. And I think oh, we do need a position on this. So pause, rel, save. Duplicate position. Oh, okay. It's already position absolute. So, thank goodness for linting. It helps me do all the things that I'm supposed to do correctly. All right. Except now, I don't know where it is. But the nice thing is, I can find it with that. All right. So, that needs to move. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to grab it here. We're going to tell the, oh, I don't know why it lists left first. Anyway, uh, the top of it, I'm going to tell it to be minus 10 pixels. And then left, I'm going to say just 10 pixels and go from there. So there, we've got it peeking out a little bit. All right. Um, we've got a friend from, I'm guessing, Russia. Uh, I do not speak or read Russian, but uh, happy to have you. All right, so let's grab this. What I'm gonna do is I want it to not peek out quite as much. So I'm gonna tell it to be top three. Uh, and then with the left, I'm going to align it underneath the icon there. So I think that looks visually centered. So I'm gonna copy top and left and paste in those new values. Um, all right, so now with this, what I'd like to do is move the whole thing up. Um, the reason I want to move the whole thing up is I want that, that 
icon to to have a little bit more of a relationship with that so we've got a little bit of overlap there there we go that is top 60 so i'm gonna go here tell it to be 60. then let's take a look at what happens on the ipad uh, i'm gonna need to tell it to be top a different value uh, i'm gonna go ahead and do that top 75 so let's go ahead and do that all right let's undo this okay now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to undo this display none and you can see that it appears now the 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 background that i have on these has a bit of a transition and it doesn't show up nearly as fast as as this drop down navigation does um, so we're going to fix that but first uh, what I'm going to want to do is uh, go to my Git client and I'm going to um, save everything. Now, uh, I am being a bit fast and loose because this is my own private repo. Sorry, I'm trying to get myself a little snack. Uh, but I'm going to take a look at this. Colors, I added a new color. Now, I know I added this new color, but I did not add that color to the tokens. So you can see that there is no medium gray so let's go and fix that colors nope that's not the one i want yellow so let's go with doing this gray medium save it and that should color gray medium except that doesn't look right at all i think there are color library oh yeah So in order to get all of these colors to show up, there's a little bit of a dance that has to be done. So uh, I have not much of an interest in that, but there we go. All right, so our color's been added. We're happy with that. So colors, all right, fonts. We updated our font. Footer, we got rid of some things. Footer stories, we fixed the logo. The header, we went in and we made some changes, adding some stuff, removing some stuff. The HTML for that page has been updated. And the we updated the logo here. Let's go ahead and stage all of this. Uh, I'm just going to call this nav, just to give a little bit of a hint. And now I'm going to push this up. All right. Now... Sorry. It's really rude of me to eat on a stream. I just wanted a snack. Um, whenever I push this up, it goes to Netlify. And in Netlify, um, what it's going to do is it is going to recreate the staging site that I have for it. Now, um, uh, you can see right here that it's building. So... Um, Everybody who is a Patreon supporter of the Fade SRD can go to that link and see all of this progress happening, which is really nice. Um, uh, well, I mean, at least I think it's pretty nice. I, I like this behind the scenes stuff, but um, I know that the sooner I get this done, the sooner everybody will be happy because then we can move on to more fun and exciting sort of things. Hmm. Got that stuck in my throat. All right. So now that we've pushed that code up, um, yep, let's go ahead and hide that. Let's talk about um, making this kind of appear in a more interesting way. Um, so that's something that I can technically do in Figma is figure out how to like animate that in. I'd much rather prefer to work in the code to animate it in. Um, and whenever I say animate it in, I mean something like this. So um, let me go to the Quest SRD uh, which is something that, that I also built. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at it in small screen mode. So let's take a look at it on a small device. When I click this little uh, hamburger icon, uh, the, the rules animate in. So they disappear quickly, but they animate in a little bit. So I want to I do that with this as well. So let's see what we can do with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Twizzlers are awesome. All right. So, uh, first thing is is that um, we want to make sure that it will fade in at the same time. We got to figure out what we want to do. I'm thinking having it kind of like animate down and in. So let's close a bunch of this stuff and so we can focus on our header. So now fly out display none. Um, we're going to have to do display none. Um, we don't necessarily need to do display none, but it's going to um, help see when we have the CSS, we really have a binary. We have off, on, off, on. Uh, what we kind of want is a, a off loading on, off loading off. Okay, and so what that does is that will give us a variety of states to work from. Okay, um, and so uh, if this were just how, you know, it would work, perfectly fine it works great I've I've no complaints or issues with that um, so let's um, let's take a look at what we can do to kind of uh, change this up a little bit so hmm we want to change a variety of states let's see I believe I can add JavaScript here in the header so I believe if I add header.js um, do, 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 console log uh, there. Let's see if we get it in the console. Hmm. Yeah, it has been a while since I've added JavaScript here inside of Mulsify. Hmm. You know what's nice? I still have the default components, so I can take a look at what they're doing. Because I know that main menu JS. All right. Drupal behaviors main menu. Hmm. Well, let's do what we need to. All right. And do, 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 do. That. Last one needs to stay. All right. Um, console.log context. Mm -hmm. right. Just do that. Let's get rid of that. Triple behaviors. This is, yep, it's, it is the main menu, so let's see. So, Oh, uh, let's start that. So we're starting Storybook again since we added a new file. It's doing its thing, taking its time. All right, I have to stop eating Twizzlers. They keep getting caught in my throat, making it hard for me to talk. All right, let's come here. Let's reload the page. Uh, do, 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 do. Not worried about that. Uh, I think maybe console log is not working. Oh, let's see. Uh, let's do. All right. Because it might be removing console log. Let's do const um, test equals context. Um, document. Oh, no. Uh -huh. Query selector. Let's get primary then. Test. Mm, no. Wait a minute. Oh my. Let's see. JS add. Stop this. Sometimes it takes. Setting CSS styles using JavaScript. Do, 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 do. 
style dot okay. We'll just do the opacity equals zero point five. All right. So let's take a look. What do we got? Mm, it does not seem to be firing because that would be nav primary. Maybe I need to rename this to underscore header. Let's rebuild that. Oh, oh, JavaScript. Actually, test if it works or not. If this particular script works, um, but just using that, uh, I guess not. Grab this, we're going to pop it into the console. All right, now if we output test, no. So that's not working. What am I missing? Live streaming, this is the best idea ever. Nav primary. Document query selector and primary. Let foo equal foo. All right. Weird. Did I have a typo? Super weird. Okay, well, uh, foo. Oh, wait, here. So, foo opacity is 0.5. Maybe it just can't tell. Or that's just not working. This is fantastic. Dot style dot opacity. Oh, that's where it is. That's dot style dot opacity. Okay. So if I come here and then do style dot opacity. All right. So let's go ahead and fix this. Uh, reload the page since I've already made a change. And the JavaScript is not firing. That's so weird. So that's cool. Um, I gotta figure this out. You know what? Let's go to the docs. Who doesn't like going to the documentation? All right, read stories, search. No, nope. hold on, stop back. No, this is installation, usage, documented components, maybe Webpack and Babel. Nope, documented pages. No, nope, this is style guide usage. Also, I do pull commands. Linting JavaScript. Yeah, I like linting JavaScript. Do I have to bring in the JS maybe into my stories? Hmm. 
maybe that's it. Let's take a look again at this default components. Main menu. Oh, there's a story there. Menus, dot stories. All right. There's twig files, YAML files, import, main menu, main menu. Yep, that's it. I need to import JavaScript. Oh, I should have figured that. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, import. Oh, what did that import look like? It was just, all right. Oh, do, 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 do. Now we should see what we expect to see when changes get made. Great. Oh, man. Now let's get rid of that and see if it still does what it's supposed to do. Looks like it does. All right, fantastic. So now we can go forward with uh, adding states. Oh, context is defined but never used. Yes, I know. I'm working on it. Let me save that. All right. So what I want to do is I want to take whenever has fly has nav flyout uh, gets hovered over, we're going to create a variety of states. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, in the JavaScript we're going to create a const of um, has nav flyout equals context. So why am I using context instead of document? If you're writing just vanilla JavaScript, you would use um, you would use document. Um, but I'm using context in this context because I'm going to be connecting this to Drupal. Um, and so that is how this is set up. If I switch it over to WordPress, then I may need to make some changes, um, but that's okay. So context, a query selector, I want to get has nav flyout. Great, I have that. Um, now, uh, let's see. Add. We're going to have to do uh, add event. Event. Hmm, why is it not auto completing correctly? Let's do js add event listener. All right. I do a lot of googling whenever I uh, I write some code because sometimes. I don't know what I'm doing. So, I mean, for what it's worth, I am a designer. Um, so, mouse, what are, the, oh, what are the different options for that? MDN is amazing, by the way. It is a shame what has happened recently to Firefox. I'm very, very sad. Uh, let's see, event listener options. I want, um, oh, that's not what I want. That's mouse up. What I really want is event, events, clipboard events, right, mouse. Mouse events, here we are. All right, I want mouse enter. All right, so on mouse enter, we are going to run the function handle mouse enter. All right, so uh, that is going to be the name of a function that we're going to add in here. So we're going to say const handle mouse enter. Um, equals uh, all right so we've got an arrow function there what we're going to want to do is um, add a class add oh sorry class list add and we're going to say uh, call it opening and just to test it, we're going to go ahead and save all of that. Do we have a problem here? Yes. Uh, there is no comma. All right. Does that solve it? It was used before it was defined. Well, all right. So, there. One problem. 
Choose before was defined. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's go check out what we've got. All right. Uh, let's get. I need to get rid of that now because I don't see. All right. So let's take a look and inspect and see that. Hey, it's got opening. Now, one of the things that we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to um, uh, actually kind of namespace it a little bit and call it nav flyout opening. So, hey, kiddo. I am. I'm live streaming some coding right now, kiddo. I'm live. No one can see you right now. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to have to wrap up here soon. Just got to the to the interesting part. Um, but I'm so sorry. But it is a Saturday, and I've got some other things that I have to take care of. So thank you all very much for, um, for watching and enjoying. And if you like this, give it a thumbs up. Tell me on, on Twitter or here. And uh, see you next time. Can I say hi? Bye. Yeah, you can say hi, kiddo. Hi. <laughs> Oh.